is your A-26, a flying gun platform that lives up to its name, the Invader. You can call her an attack bomber, a medium bomber, or a fighter bomber. All three names fit. She's one of the most versatile weapons in the air. The A-26 packs a hefty wallop. It has three interchangeable nose sections, each bristling with different combinations of guns. This model has 650s in the nose. The top and bottom turrets carry 250s each. It carries more bombs farther and faster than any other medium bomber and doesn't sacrifice protective firepower to do it. The airplane is highly maneuverable, responds quickly to control pressures, and at her altitude cruises as fast as a fighter. Get that? As fast as a fighter. Some airplane, isn't it? No question about it. The A-26 is a pilot's airplane. No vicious tendencies, funny rugged, and easy to fly. Now, my job here in transitional training is to see that you pilots measure up to the airplane. Not that you have to be a hot rock to fly an A-26, but you can't go around with your head up either. Now, everything you need to know about the airplane is right here in your manual. It's not a school book, but a practical pilot's training manual, written by instructor pilots. So use it. Use your own copy along with your TOs, and you'll find your transitional period here to be the smoothest 10 weeks you've ever spent. Now let's go down the line and see how it works. I'm not going to try and tell you all about the A26, but I am going to show you how to use your manual and give you a few practical flying tips. Like every other airplane, you start first with inspections and checks. Just remember that in the A-26, the number of pilots' checks has been held to an absolute minimum. So never miss a single one. After you make a complete before entering check, make a thorough visual inside inspection. Just follow the procedures outlined in your manual step by step and take your time. Your cockpit checklist runs counterclockwise. And here's a tip. No matter how well you think you know your cockpit, use your checklist. After you've completed it, you're ready to start your engines and taxi out. And incidentally, if you get that funny feeling you've forgotten something, run over the check again. Take care of your nose wheel by rolling straight ahead a few feet before turning. Taxi slowly. Don't overload your gear with fast or abrupt turns and go easy on the brakes. Ease them on, don't jam them. And never taxi on terrain too soft or too rough unless you want to be towed back to the barn. Now for your run up and power check. Again, follow your procedure outlined in the manual. And remember, a shortcut in checks is a shortcut to trouble. If everything doesn't check perfectly, give the airplane back to the crew chief. Otherwise, you're all set to make your before takeoff check and fly her away. Open your throttles with one steady movement to take off manifold pressure. Don't worry about getting that nose wheel off the runway. And keep her straight with rudder and throttles. When you reach an airspeed of 120 to 125 miles per hour, fly the airplane off the runway. The A-26 takes off and lands differently from any other airplane. The A-26 takeoff is nose low. Never let that nose wheel off the runway more than a few inches. Here's why. The top airplane is a B-25. The bottom is an A-26. Now, both these takeoffs are correct, but each for the design of its respective airplane. The A-26 is a clean, high-speed airplane. Quick takeoff depends on rapid acceleration to about 125 miles per hour. With the nose wheel low, she gets up to speed and gets off fast. But if the nose wheel is held high, it creates great drag and delays takeoff. The cruising control chart in your manual will give you the most efficient power settings for all flight conditions. There's no guesswork here. Follow it exactly. Violent acrobatics are forbidden. That includes spins, rolls, loops, and extremely violent or secondary stalls. However, in a normal stall, she falls straight ahead with no tendency to drop either wing. With wheels and flaps down, she stalls at about 105. Reduce power to about 12 inches. 
pull the nose up no more than 15 degrees above the horizon. And there she goes. To make a complete recovery, let the airspeed build up to about 170 miles per hour before you ease her out. I'm going to show you why the A26 is so stable in a stall. Along the top surface of the wing, I had the crew chief attach a number of little pieces of yarn. And this yarn will show you exactly what happens to the wing when it stalls. Clean, she stalls at about 132. When the stall begins, the yarn will burble near the wing root and work out toward the wing tip. The fact that your wing tips are the last to stall out give you your stability. Yarn is starting to swirl along the wing root. Notice the violent burble spreading over the nacelle just before the stall. Now for some single engine tips. If you know what to do and how to do it, engine failure in an A26 merely means single engine flight, not an emergency. Follow me through on one. I'll chop the right engine and show you what a whale of a single engine airplane this is. Notice there's very little yaw. About two and a half degrees of rudder trim will center your needle and ball. Remember that single engine flight is no different from two engine flight if you maintain sufficient airspeed. Normally loaded, it'll fly safely down to 135 miles per hour, single engine speed. As long as you keep your airspeed up, you can turn, even climb into the dead engine with perfect safety. In a couple of minutes, I'll show you what happens if you should lose an engine soon after you leave the ground. Right now, I'm going to demonstrate the only correct way to land this airplane, full flaps. Remember, good landings are planned, not made. Drop about a quarter flaps here on your downwind leg. Now follow me through on this approach and landing. Here we are in the final. Four landing check made, altitude about 800 feet, airspeed 150. Now drop full flaps. Carry 15 to 18 inches of power, add or reduce power if necessary to maintain a constant glide of about 135 miles per hour. Break your glide and come in over the fence at about 115. Hold her level and fly it onto the runway. Pull back in the throttles, let her settle on the nose wheel and start braking. This is how that same landing looks from the pilot's seat. Now, set up a good approach and landing. Airspeed 150. Drop full flaps. Carry enough power to maintain a constant glide path at an airspeed of about 135 miles per hour. Now hold her in an almost level attitude until the main gear is on the runway. Don't cut the power until you've touched ground. Take a good look at this landing attitude as you'll see it from the cockpit. This is the secret of an A26 full flap landing. Don't cut the power until your main wheels are on the runway. Let's look at that landing again. Now right here, if you should pull the nose up or cut the power, you'd stall and smack the runway. Never forget these two things about an A26 landing. One, land in an almost level attitude. Two, use power until the main gear is on the runway. I've shown you that A26 landings are different from other airplanes. Let's have a quick look at how the others land so you can fix the difference in your mind. An A20 landing. It's in a tail low attitude. Here's the B25, always tail low on landing. And it's the same with the B-26, tail low landing attitude. Take a look at all four airplanes. The A-20, the B-25, and the B-26, all land tail low. Now look at the A-26. It lands in a level attitude, nose wheel just off the runway. I've kept repeating that the A-26 has a different landing attitude than any other airplane. Here's why. Here are two wing sections. The one on top is the conventional wing and flap. The bottom one is the new A-26 high-speed wing and double-slotted flap. Now let's figure we'll bring these two wing sections in for a landing. Watch closely what happens to the airflow. There you have full flaps. Both wings are still flying, but notice how much more drag is present on the A26 wing. 
Now look at the difference. The conventional wing in a nose-high landing is starting to burble into a stall. It's mushing. But the A26 wing with that big flap cupping into the airflow is completely stalled. A conventional airfoil and flap will mush and stall out slowly. The A26 high-speed wing will not mush in a nose-high landing attitude. Therefore, always land in a level attitude. Remember the level landing attitude of the A26, and you can grease her in every time. I'm going to simulate engine failure on this takeoff to prove to you that the A26 has a built-in margin of safety. I'll make a normal takeoff and then chop the right engine at single engine airspeed of 135 miles per hour. At about 125, I fly her off the ground. Retract gear. At 135, I cut the right engine. Notice the yaw isn't too bad. I'm holding the nose low to maintain 135. I'm still holding directional control with rudder. Now I've got a little more airspeed and I'm making a gentle climb. <laughs> I guess there never was a pilot's bull station that didn't sooner or later get around to slicing some single engine baloney about how any two-engine airplane might flop over on its back on single engine. Well, here's the dope on that. Assume that you're just staggering along very near stalling speed on single engine. Your wing goes down and you foolishly wind an aileron instead of rudder to pick it up again. Look what happens. You've increased the angle of attack up to 16 degrees and have effectively stalled out a large portion of your down wing. Your other wing with reverse aileron has a lower angle of attack. It's no wonder then that the airplane flips over on its back. Remember, no airplane flips over on its back unless you voluntarily or involuntarily put it there. With only one engine operating, you still have a safe airplane. You can climb 350 feet a minute and cruise at 200 indicated. If you lose an engine before you're off the ground, chop your power and get busy on your brakes. If you're in the air, the best thing to do is to keep flying. First, maintain single engine airspeed. Second, maintain directional control by holding rudder. And then, and not until then, start your orderly feathering procedure. Single engine landing is not much different from normal landing, except you make your turns more shallow and set your base leg out a little longer. Remember, it takes a little longer to get your gear down on single engine, so start earlier. Your approach is slightly higher, so you won't have to have a big burst of power at the last minute. Come in a little faster, 150 miles per hour. Drop only three quarter flaps, then trim as needed. When you flare out for a landing, you can easily override any remaining trim. exceptional control you have over the plane on single engine on final approach. Let's suppose some knucklehead taxis directly into our landing pad. Cussing won't help. So, we ease the power on the only engine we've got. Pick up the wheels and maintain single engine airspeed and directional control at the same time. Then start milking up those flaps. Single engine go around isn't recommended in place of PT, but if you use your head, it's almost a save. That's about enough for the first look at the A26. It's a lot of airplane. But everything you need to know about it, you'll find right here in your manual. All your procedures, both normal and emergency. Make any note you want to, write in your own copy. It belongs to you. Use it. You're in luck to be flying the A26. She's all yours. And wherever you take her, you'll find that her speed, 
Maneuverability and firepower can be relied upon to pull you through the tight spots and bring you home. 